tonight, a plea agreement for killer nurse Janine Jones, the punishment she now faces. Why a proposal for a gas station on the city's east side could force several people out of their homes. And how the local Martin Luther King Day March became one of the largest in the nation. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9 from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. The woman known as the killer nurse has been sentenced to another life term in prison. Janine Jones handed that life sentence in court today after taking a plea agreement. Judge Frank Castro sentenced her for the killing of infant Joshua Sawyer. As she had done with at least six other infants in the early 80s, Jones injected the babies with lethal doses of either painkillers or muscle relaxants while caring for them in area hospitals. Following sentencing today, the families of the other infants Jones had pleaded guilty to killing were allowed to address her. Nobody knows this pain I carry, only I. And finally it's over. Even though my brother is in a box, she's gonna spend the rest of her life in a box too. So I, I can smile today knowing that. Jones will be eligible for parole in 18 years. She'll be 87 years old then. And eligibility rarely means release. A proposed gas station could meet a handful of people on the east side will be forced out of their homes. Quick Trip wants to turn a residential plot of land in the Government Hill neighborhood into commercial land so it can build a new location. Some neighbors are worried about where they'll go when they're forced to leave. Tiffany Huertas with that story. It's quiet. There isn't that much traffic here. Ismael Barba Padilla has been renting a home near Walter Street and I-35 for about 14 years. But he worries about a new project that has him searching for a new place to live. The owner wants to sell everything, the entire area. Ismael is not alone. There are several homes on this land that the company Quick Trip is trying to take over. QT wants to rezone two acres of residential property to commercial use for a new gas station. But Ismael is concerned he won't have anywhere to live with the rising cost of homes. Everything is expensive. A house today is over 100, 150. You don't find houses like before for 60 or 50. Ismael says they are giving him until April to leave. Diet Cole, who also lives in the neighborhood, doesn't want Quick Trip to move into her community. We're in favor of development, and we want, we are for the kind of businesses that are appropriate for our family centered neighborhood and then bring good to the neighborhood, like multifamily housing or corner markets or grocery stores. If the plan gets approved, she says the gas station will be a few steps from her house. She believes this could lower her property value and impact her health. Quick Trip says it chose this location because it's a highly traveled area. We also reached out to Councilwoman Jada Andrew Sullivan, whose district includes this area. Her office sent us a statement saying in part, quote, we do need economic growth for our district, but this comes down to the proper use of this particular land and how does this truly affects the environment and the lives that have to live in the neighborhood, end quote. As for Ismael, he says only time will tell what happens next. In this case, what can one do? Quick Trip says the seller and QT are giving each tenant relocation assistance, which means monetary and real estate agent assistance. Myra. All right, thanks, Tiffany. And the city's planning and zoning commission will make a recommendation on the proposed change to the city council. It's then up to council members to decide on it. A former Leon Valley City Councilman who was booted out of office is hoping to get his seat back. Benny Martinez applied to be on the ballot for the place for Leon Valley City Council seat. Now, last August, Martinez was voted out after being accused of belittling city staff members and sexually harassing a councilwoman. Martinez always denied those allegations. Matthew Hody was eventually appointed to fill his seat. But then a group of citizens gathered signatures asking to replace Councilwomen Monica Alcocer and Donna Charles. Both voted to remove Martinez from office. It's a decision Mayor Chris Riley says should have been made by voters and not the council. Two months after that removal, Councilwoman Charles filed an ethics complaint against the mayor. 
and alleged attempted abduction making waves on social media and now police are investigating. Passengers terrified after a plane catches fire in the air and a woman caught on camera doing something bizarre with a grocery store ham. Here's tonight's nine at nine. There have already been six deadly murders. Four of those have happened in just the past four days. Two occurred last night. Those homicides happening across the city from the far west side on Calabra up to the far east side on North Foster Road. Of the last four shootings, only the suspect from a murder suicide case is known. San Antonio police investigating an alleged attempted abduction in a Target parking lot. A woman claims a man tried to take her at the Target in Stone Oak near Highway 281 and TPC Parkway on Tuesday. Police confirmed using surveillance video that a man was seen driving a dark colored four door BMW with a sunroof. The woman posted the story on Facebook and it's been shared more than 2400 times. Suddenly it felt like you're getting shot at. It was like pow, 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 loud shaking the whole plane. It was just like booming noise. The plane was shaking, lights were blinking. Flames shooting from this United jet moments after takeoff. It had some sort of mechanical problem. The plane had to circle for at least 20 minutes before landing safely in New Jersey. Passengers say their flight was initially delayed because of mechanical issues. They're now questioning why they were allowed to take off at all. The Chief Justice of the United States, John Roberts, taking an oath and a second job as presiding officer of the impeachment trial of President Donald Trump. Earlier today, Justice Roberts swore in the Senate to act as jurors in that trial. The president is accused of withholding military aid to Ukraine for personal gain. President Trump maintains he did nothing illegal. It's a hoax. Everybody knows that. It's a, it's a complete hoax. The trial begins on Tuesday. Now to an update on a deadly officer involved shooting. The man who was shot and killed by a federal task force member on Monday has been identified as 45 year old Randy Glenn Goodale. The incident happened on Stetson View. An officer and federal task force member were arresting Goodale on a charge of felony possession of a handgun. Police say Goodale rammed their vehicles while trying to get away, which led to the shooting. The fallout from the World Series cheating scandal continues to grow. The New York Mets announcing Carlos Beltran is out as manager. MLB investigators say he helped orchestrate a cheating scheme using a camera in the stands to record signals from the opposing catcher, then tipping off their batters by banging on a garbage can. The Astros and Boston Red Sox also fired managers. These three teams are now scrambling to pick up the pieces after these firings. It's possible they'll start spring training next month without a manager. Pope Francis appoints the first female to a high ranking role in the Vatican's diplomatic division. Francesca Di Giovanni, an Italian attorney, will serve as undersecretary for relations with states. According to the Vatican, Di Giovanni will handle the Holy See's political and diplomatic activity. A grocery store owner in Oklahoma definitely saw something he never expected on the store's security cameras. At first glance, you see three people looking at a cooler. But watch what this woman does with a six pound ham. Take a look from this angle. The woman slips the ham into her skirt and just walks away. The owner says she already had several packages of bacon in that skirt too. The woman has not been caught. A town near Seattle has been trapped under snow since Sunday. It definitely is out of the norm for how short of a time we've gotten this much snow. Search and rescue teams were out this morning armed with chainsaws and four wheel drive to check on people who no one had heard from since the storm hit. A convoy of volunteers went up a nearby mountain to help bring back supplies. For now, there is no sign of melting and the area is hit with several feet of snow. To read more about these nine stories, go to KSAT.com. Adam Kasky is with us tonight. We saw some, well, some of us saw some good rain <laughs> yeah. out there. Not everybody. So the question is, are we going to see any more of that? We will, but it's still going to be hit or miss. You know, kind of luck of the draw with who gets a good little downpour here and there throughout yeah. the day tomorrow, just like it was today. And here's proof of that today. You look at Bandera, over two inches of rain. Then you get down to Kelly Field and only a tenth of an inch, right? Selma, about a third of an inch. San Antonio International, a third of an inch, and Stone Oak, nearly half an inch, but then Myco, 1.7. So a big, you know, temp or shouldn't say temperature, but 
rainfall spread today as we often see. And I think we'll see very similar conditions again tomorrow in terms of some people getting more rain than others, of course. And right now in terms of rainfall activity, you look around San Antonio and we don't have any real active showers. There are a few drips and drops here and there and the clouds are very low, but no real active rainfall. You have to head west of town right along 83. La Prior through Uvalde up toward Lakey scattered about even into uh, well, basically the Sabinal area in western Medina County, slowly pushing northward. We'll continue to see some of this activity just scattered across South Texas for the rest of the night and then even here and there throughout the day tomorrow. Here's the future cast and you go toward the rush hour tomorrow morning and I think we'll have some areas of light rain, but for the most part we'll just have drizzle, fog and a few sprinkles here and there. A few showers then into the afternoon and then the rain chances kind of taper off again. Uh, by tomorrow evening with just low clouds lingering around for Friday evening. So get ready for another damp commute to start the day tomorrow. Look at the temperatures right now. Big temperature spread from 42 in Junction, 43 Rock Springs to 70 in Corpus Christi and nearly 70 degrees in Victoria. This is because of a boundary that basically is sitting right overhead. It was moved in as a cold front ran out of gas and now is just stalled right over South Texas. So it made for quite a temperature spread throughout the day, even earlier this afternoon. Right now, Kerrville's 52 and in San Antonio, we're at 61. Uh -huh. Temperatures aren't going to drop that much. Look at tomorrow morning, 59 degrees here in San Antonio. Then by the afternoon, we'll probably make it to about the 70 degree mark, but there will be some locations closer to the coastline, well into the 70s, but into the hill country only in the 60s. So tomorrow morning, 59. That's at sunrise, drizzle fog, some sprinkles, so a damp commute and just some scattered light rain through the noon hour, some lingering showers into the afternoon and a high temperature of around 70 degrees. Saturday, we'll start the day with a shot at rain, then a cold front moves through and that should sweep away the humidity, the clouds and any chance for rain for the second half of Saturday. The wind is going to kick up though. We'll be in the 60s on Saturday, but look what happens into Sunday, 37 in the morning and then only mid 50s by Sunday afternoon. So we'll feel more of a chill in the air for the second part of the weekend. Looking ahead, we get into next week, Monday, MLK Junior Day, 52 degrees, so a chill in the air, but partly cloudy, so at least we'll have some sunshine and then some rain chances as we get toward the end of next week. We're looking at some isolated to scattered chances of rain by Wednesday and Thursday. San Antonio State Representative Lyle Larson is challenging Mayor Ron Nirenberg's mass transit funding plans. Two one-eighth cent sales taxes are expiring in 2021. Mayor Nirenberg wants to take the one that currently funds an aquifer protection program and use that to send more money to VIA instead. But Larson pushed back in an open letter, suggesting it would be better to take over the tax stream that funds pre-K 4 SA. Larson, a Republican, says the ta Texas legislature passed a bill last year requiring districts to offer full day pre-kindergarten and appropriated money in an early education allotment. So Larson believes the districts will now be able to provide the services Pre-K 4SA currently delivers. Pre-K 4SA officials, though, say the bill doesn't fully fund the need and suggested it might not be a permanent fix. There is a fear that in the next biennium there will not be sufficient funding to continue to provide that support and then districts would be back to the same level of funding they had previously. The mayor has yet to issue a statement on this, but a spokesperson for the mayor says he supports keeping the tax for pre-K 4SA. Alamo Colleges continues to work towards its goal of providing free college tuition to San Antonio high school students. Today, they got a little bit closer to reaching that goal. The Charles Butt Foundation donated $1.5 million to the program. The program is expected to cost about $122 million over the next five years. The Alamo Colleges set a goal to raise $5 million in private donations within that time frame. After today's donation, they have about a million dollars left to go. Most parents know that kids love screen time, but limiting that TV or iPad time and reading to children instead will boost their brain development. This first scan is from a preschooler who is often read to by a caregiver. The red areas show a growth in organized white matter supporting language and literacy development. The second scan is from a child who likely spends about two hours a day with screens. The blue shows massive underdevelopment and the same areas needed to support learning. 
You're watching KSAT News at 9. We'll be back in just one minute. Some new documents released are shedding light on the Bear County Sheriff's race. Incumbent Javier Salazar and challenger Willie Ning have emerged as fundraising front runners, according to campaign finance records. Those records show that Salazar, who's running in the Democratic primary, brought in more than $78,000 in contributions from July through the end of December. Republican challenger Ning raised more than $152,000, and all other candidates from both parties received much smaller contributions in that same time period. Right now on KSAT.com, you can catch up on all the campaign numbers. The Texas primary is March 3rd. And we want to remind you, KSAT News at 9 is launching a newsletter to help you keep track of all the important political news this year. There's going to be a whole lot of it. We're calling it Understand the 2020 Elections. You can sign up for that newsletter right now at KSAT.com slash newsletters. Let's take a look at today's top stories. The CDC saying there have been more than 2,500 cases of lung injury linked to vaping now. At least 60 deaths in 27 states as well. As of January 14th, 2,668 lung injury cases are confirmed across all 50 states, the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. That's an increase of 66 cases over the week before. The Pentagon announcing it has received a request from the Department of Homeland Security for 270 miles of border wall. This allows the Pentagon to construct the barriers under its authority to block international drug smuggling. So far, the administration has built 100 miles of new wall along the U.S.-Mexico border, but that's only a portion of the administration's goal to build 450 miles by the end of the year. Americans got hit hard last year with those annoying robocalls. A company that provides a service to block those calls reports nearly 59 billion calls last year. That's up 22 percent from 2018. Texas and California got the most robocalls, more than 6 billion. A new anti-robocall bill signed into law allows companies to be fined for each illegally placed call. Organizers say it is the biggest Martin Luther King Jr. March in the entire nation, and it happens right here in San Antonio. Every year, tens of thousands of people walk nearly three miles from Martin Luther King Jr. Academy to Pittman Sullivan Park on the city's historic east side to take part in this decades old event. We sat down with the chair of the city's MLK Jr. Commission to learn how the march started out and how it's grown over the years. Here's Devin Clark with tonight's Throwback Thursday. It's really uh, a privilege that San Antonio does host the largest march since we only have 7 to 8 percent African American. But what needs to be noted, it's not an African American march. It is a people march. It is a march for the community. Dr. Keeley Petty says the roots of San Antonio's MLK March can be traced back to 1968 with Reverend Dr. Raymond Callies. He organized the first march to call attention to the need for basic infrastructure on the east side. It was Reverend Callies by himself and probably his family. He was a lone ranger uh, just wanting to promote the cause and the mission of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. But it didn't take long for the march to gain traction. Through Throughout the years, uh, city of San Antonio residents began to partner with him 
on the march, and in 1987, the city of San Antonio made it a city commission. And little by little, with the help of private residents, nonprofits, and other civic organizations, the event grew. I think the swelling of the march began because everybody has an interest in dignity, everybody has an interest in justice, everybody has an interest in civil rights for all people from all walks of life. Throughout the years, people have traveled from across the country to participate, including members of Dr. King's family and activists involved in the 1960s civil rights movement, like Rosa Parks. The march now has more than 300,000 participants each year, and that number is expected to continue to grow. We have a lot of dreamers in San Antonio, and they have an intense desire to keep the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. alive. It's a dream that Petty says is still important. We still are in this 21st century. We're still fighting for equality. We're still fighting for civil rights. We are still fighting for justice. The march is taking place on Monday, Martin Luther King Jr. Day. To learn more about the march and to register, go to sanantonio.gov slash MLK. If you've been in San Antonio for more than a minute, you've probably seen those huge pair of boots outside of North Star Mall. 35 feet tall, 10,000 pounds. They are a local pop culture icon, and today marks their 40th anniversary. We spoke to the general manager of North Star Mall this week to learn a little bit more about how they ended up here in our city. The company that owned North Star Mall actually ended up in a bidding war between a couple other properties in Texas because everybody wanted a, you know, these boots at their location. So we won and we were able to purchase them for $20,000. I think we got our money's worth. Um, and then we went through the process of bringing them from Washington, D.C. to San Antonio, Texas. The Boots anniversary comes less than a month after the passing of the artist behind them, Bob Wade. North Star Mall plans to honor Wade with a limited edition Fiesta medal this year. The relationship between the U.S. and Iran has become increasingly more difficult over the years. And with the recent U.S. assassination of an Iranian leader, foreign policy is now a hot current topic. So we want to know what questions you have about the tensions with Iran. You can submit your questions right now on ksat.com slash SAQ. And then tomorrow, Steve Spreester will be speaking about the conflict with Trinity political science professor Susan Siavashi who happens to be from Iran. The conversation will be live streamed on ksat.com tomorrow at 2.30 p.m. You can submit those questions right now. Let's go to our website now to find out what is trending tonight. Farah Sabawi is here to tell us about it. Myra, I think it was a couple months ago that I tried to sell you on George Strait's house. Ah, yes. Yeah, yes, and, I uh, remember. You didn't end up taking it. I, no, yeah. no, it didn't work out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know it's a little bit pricey, but I got another listing for you. I want to run it by you, see if you're interested in this one, okay? Okay, so you are becoming the realtor. I'm looking for looking for some commission money on this one okay. here. All right, now, all right. it's a $320 million uh, ah. Texas ranch. I'm ah. sorry. Sorry, I'm sorry. Just you are in it for the commission, I'd say. Just hear me out. So this is out in West Texas. It's called a uh, Brewster Ranch. It is 120,000 acres large. It's bigger than all of San Antonio. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful yeah. part of Texas. It is. It is. It's but right. It's north, right of Big Bend. It's a very scenic area. Yeah. Um, now, I know 320 million sounds like a lot, right? <laughs> it's because it is. So here's the thing, Myra. Okay, that's fair. But they're also selling it in five uh, individual portions if you want to try oh, to do that instead. I see. Yeah, okay. and the cheapest one starts at 15.5 million. Well, have you sold, thought about that? Sold. You know, if news doesn't work out for yeah. you. I'll, oh, I'll get right into the real estate <laughs> business. Really cool area, great place if you want to disconnect and be a hermit. Maybe if you have a bunch of millions, this is the, the place for you. <laughs> if you have millions to spend and don't yeah. want to talk to anybody after you spend it, go check out this that's, place. Yeah, and so uh, that's just one of the things you can find on ksat.com. Pretty exciting uh, over there if okay. you're looking for that type of ranch. Uh, 
elsewhere, uh, we're looking for a person who has a $13.5 uh, million dollar lotto ticket that is still unclaimed Ooh, in Laredo. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so, so this person a winner, but still couldn't buy that ranch. Yeah, I guess not. No, well, they could make, if they had two million, they could have bought the first one, maybe. <laughs> um, but yeah, there is a, a winning ticket out there, still unclaimed. Now they know it was sold at the Stripe store uh, in Laredo on <sighs> McPherson Road. So if you've been out there recently and bought you know something. You this is like underneath the seat of a car oh, I or know. tucked in a I jacket know. pocket. Or the dude like ripped it and threw it away or something already. And you know thought, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, the odds are good. So those winning numbers were 16, 34, 38, 40, 49, and 54. You see that? Yeah, right there. Okay. So, uh, if you got that line around, go ahead and turn it in. It may be a good idea. Yeah, try to find it if you thought you lost it. Yeah, um, our last story of the day, and this one is a pretty funny one, but um, there's a, such a thing called sugar babies out there. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. I have heard of such a thing. Paris. So this website called Seeking Arrangement, um, it's, it's a great way for you to, I guess, meet people if you have trouble meeting people, um, but they really You're making this sound all nice and friendly. There's, there are other motives, it's right? Start, it's a start. <laughs> uh, it could start out that way. Um, it's, it's a really uh, interesting website. Now they release data uh, every year. Last, uh, earlier uh, last year, they gave us uh, the sugar daddy data. And so we knew that there was a thousand sugar daddies in San Antonio you said ready. sugar daddy data with a straight face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I take data seriously, Myra. <laughs> um, sugar daddies, there was uh, about a, a thousand apparently in San Antonio, but this report states that there are more than 1,800 uh, kids in Texas State and UTSA that are registered as sugar babies seeking uh -huh. some money, you a know? Card-carrying sugar baby. This is how we fix student debt in this country. <laughs> oh, this is the solution we've been looking for. It's uh, all here. I'm trending. Okay. We, fix, we fix our nation's problems. Wow. That's what I love. You are just from the real estate market announcing winning lotto numbers. Yeah. To policy making. What don't Paris I do? Here. What yeah. don't I do? It's fantastic. <laughs> anytime, anytime, Myra. Until next time, Paris. I'll be here. <laughs> we'll be right back. I'm not mama. I'm not mama. Thanks for watching KSAB News at 9 tonight. That is all of our time. I'm Myra Arthur. Have a good night.